Welcome back to Author Mastery Insight. I am with an amazing author on an incredible journey, Jambi Mungay. Welcome. It's wonderful to have you here for this. What we're going to have is a fireside chat. Thank you, Dr. Chakos. It's really good to be here. <laughs> I'm very grateful you've taken time out of your schedule. There's so much that goes on in your life, and I know to, to take time to have a conversation is not always an effortless process. So I am grateful. I want to talk with you about this beautiful book, Wisdomisms. And before I go through some of the things that have been really, I guess, impactful and meaningful for me, I'd love for you to tell us the story, the journey of the, the creation of this book. Oh, my goodness. Um, it's, it is a long story, but um, I'll do my best. Um, it started with me being a seeker. Um, I began looking at an early age for a spiritual home and it was pretty difficult you know to find a religious or a religion that i could feel complete and comfortable in so i went off you know went off on a journey for years and years and i explored a lot of philosophies and um beliefs along the way. And I stopped at um, one was a course in miracles. And I worked with a fabulous uh, mentor for over eight years. And that was a Christian based philosophy. Um, and then I found and was introduced to uh, a Buddhist faith. Uh, it's called, it was started by Nitra and Daishonin in the 1200s. And um, it's called SGI, Soka Gakkai international um and it's referred as nitran buddhism so i compared the philosophies of both of these practices and i realized that they were exactly the same one had a christian perspe perspective the other didn't but essentially they followed the basic universal truths in life you know the the things like um love thy neighbor, um, uh, live a good life, be a good person. Um, what goes around comes around, which is essentially karma. And, and you know, the, the fact that everything is connected. And so having had that prior experience, um, I, let's see, let's go back to, I guess, to uh, no longer 20 over 20 years ago i'll put it that way um i was writing a um i guess a gratitude journal is what what it is called uh there and it was inspired for me uh through oprah winfrey and um i would every night at the same time write in my journal, the five things that I was grateful for, for that day. And before that all happened, I would just sit quietly and just get into a state where I was calm and um, peaceful and, you know, allow myself to open to spirit, you know, and, and I would write these little inspirations right before the the things that i was grateful for and that went on for two years i you know um and at some point i felt finished there was i didn't have a need to continue writing those things so um those things got put on the shelf you know and you know i went from there but that is essentially the how I got to where I am with, with this at this point. <laughs> so, thinking, finding your own truth, exploring belief systems, philosophies, faith, and in your own practices, documenting that journey and asking questions and, and, and utilizing a, a process of self-reflection, deep healing comes from that, deep wisdom that comes mm -hmm. from that. And, and mm -hmm. as you said, you, you felt there was a certain level of finishing, but what? I imagine, and I'm looking forward to this unfolding of this story, is there's, there's this collection of wisdom that you have, these questions and self-reflections and, and statements of truth that are now there, they're shelved. Life still goes on though. And 
between the shelving of those and the writing of this book, what took mm -hmm. place there to bring the book to fruition? What was the motivation for taking those thoughts and bringing them to material form? Well, you know, as I said, those those notes and all those things sat on the shelf for 20 years. Um, I had a, a, a terrible time with procrastination because if that had been the case, the book would have been written a long time ago. But I do believe that it wasn't time for the book to come out. What happened was the pandemic <laughs> in 2020. And um, you know, things had stopped, work, my work had stopped. And my reaction was full of fear and panic and that sense of being unsettled. It was, you know, a, a, a terrible time for everyone. And, I, you know, I looked at my reaction and I looked around me and I remembered that I had this material that I'd said a long time ago that I was going to to publish. And that was the impetus for me. You know, th this could be an answer to a very great need. And um, it's what I it's it's what I did. I sat around and decided this is my time. I I'm free. And the universe has set this, you know, this gift in front of me to be able to have something that can help other people. <laughs> And I think there's so much truth in that because, it, as you said, you know, the, the world changed in a way that caused people to have doubt, uncertainty, fear. They, there was a, an, an yeah. inability for some people to take action, to even leave their houses and, and to know whether or not they, they would be safe. And, and in the presence of those doubts, those uncertainties, those fears, an ability to, to claim your wisdom, to find a position of strength, and then to become more bold or courageous or be able to take action and, and, and discern, you know, truth from a falsity, which could potentially mean, you know, overcoming fear and, and res restoring confidence. I think the, right. the, the wisdom allows that to happen. And, and that's why when I look at, you know, both your title and the subtitle, you know, wisdom isms, a daily spirit guided approach to opening up your life to greater possibilities. And again, there's that, yeah. that cover and that title. And so the ability to sit in that moment in the presence of all the things that are happening mm -hmm. gives that ability to say, I can sit in truth. I can lean on my faith or find wisdom in right. words that allows me to not be overcome by the events of the world. I think that's a beautiful gift that you've provided here. And you did that on your own journey previously. What was it like coming back to those words and remembering those truths in the face of the challenges we've had in the last you know, couple of years? Um, it was consoling um, to look at, you, you know, I'll tell you, I actually read a wisdomism every day myself. Um, and there are times and days when I look at these words and I know that they were designed divinely inspired because they, they have such an impact on me. <laughs> it, and, and I know that that is the process for others as well. It has to be. Um, you, you, we are all essentially spiritual beings having a human experience. You know, we're living in a human experience. And, you know, that's the, the I think the overall message that, that I want to share in this book. We're much more than our fears. We are, you know, truly divine beings. And I hope that these inspirations remind the readers that, you know, this is who we really are. <laughs> so. and, I, and I want to re, re, how would I put this, re, reiterate what you just said that I think you said that I think everybody could move into this space and benefit from it. And, and I want to share with everybody watching this and again with you, absolutely it does that because whether it's 
acting as a devotional for someone or whether, as you said, a daily reader or a personal um, just moment of reflection. And some of the things that I, I love from here, you know, and, and there's effortlessness in the reading. And I love that it says today I will, because it is a statement of not only affirmation, but yes. present time um, re re realizability. It's not, I hope to become, or I will get there. It is, the truth <laughs> is today yeah. I will. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, lo I love this one, go forth with an open heart and a loving spirit. And, mm. uh, you know, mm. to remember that and to say, okay, you know, I've, today I might have been in fear. I, I picked it up in the morning and I was stressed about the events yesterday and I'm, you know, going into an office meeting where there's some, some angst and, and no, today I'm going to go forth with an open heart. <laughs> yes. A loving spirit. I'm going to come from it. And just it connects you back into that divine inspiration, that connection to truth. And it's almost though... And, and the way I like using it is a morning and an evening read in the sense that it sets me up for the day. I'm going to hold yeah. this thought today throughout the day for that day. And on the evening as right. I read right. it, I reflect on how close was I to the goal, to the intention mm. I had mm. of holding an open heart and yeah. feeling yeah. a loving yeah. spirit course through me. Perfect. Yes. <sighs> yes. And, I mean, we, we all have a choice, you know. Mm to step forward every day in faith rather than falling back, you know, into old habits and fears. And so again, this is intended to remind that person who's reading it, that that's the point of being in this, in this world, you know, Beautiful way of doing it. And one other one, because I mean, by the way, there are just so many beautiful statements of truth that you can anchor into and that you can live the hence a daily reader makes yeah. it a beautiful way to begin and, and to carry throughout the day and i only I, I could honestly have chosen hundreds but i am choosing only two simply because given the stress that we're under now i'm going to ask you to reflect and share your thoughts on this one because so many people have been through okay. stress and you know challenge and adversity and our family lives can be turned upside down and our career lives can be turned upside down. So when we say words like this, today I will choose to celebrate my life as it is right now. Mm -hmm. How do we then come to that statement when we may not feel that that is right now a truth for us? How then there's some beautiful statements that we want to move into the day with, and yet there are still some provocative statements that challenge our current state in the presence of a world that may do, if done correctly, unfold a better state. But for those who might say, I don't know that I can actually appreciate my life right now, it is a living hell. How then do those statements evoke change and bring about healing? In this particular one, it is a suggestion to accept exactly where you are in that moment. And Rejoice in it. It doesn't matter if all of these negative things are happening at once. Um, those things can be overwhelming and make you fearful and make you hesitate to be the person that you are supposed to be. Um, but this is an exercise. It's an exercise just to reflect on the dynamic presence of where you are in that moment and to use that along with other things that you're learning along this journey in the book um just how to handle it you know you don't have to choose again to live in that fearful state or to you know to to take that step back but to step forward opening up your mind and, and your spirit, you know, little by little to, to get to that goal, which is just to become a happier person, you know, and to, to on your own to create a more fulfilling life. So. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. And, and I think as we, as we start to move towards the end of this conversation, I'd, I'd love for your thoughts on the title itself, because in today's world, you know, there is a lot of knowledge out there. 
there's a lot of information available yeah. to people. But knowledge isn't wisdom. What is your thought on wisdom and, and how do we move into a space of being wisdom accessors and then wisdom keepers so that we can serve humanity from that place of wisdom? Well, you know, I, I actually am opening up to um, one of the first pages in the book where I wrote a definition of what wisdomism is. And it's when, wisdomism is a word that I thought that I made up all by myself <laughs> until I did um, a search. And I do see that the word has been used before. However, it has not been used in the context that I'm using it in. So I did make it up. <laughs> but but um, if this book, I mean, if the word were to be um, defined in the dictionary, it would be defined as a motivational statement or suggestion that promotes self-awareness and growth. And then I even added a second one that says the, the quality it's the quality of being wise um, and, uh, and adherence to the practice of applying daily wisdom or inspiration to your life. So that's what a wisdomism is. Uh, I'll probably have to go down one other channel or one other question. And it reminds me and, and that, that, that conversation there about wisdom and creating and applying this to our lives so that there is growth. Mm -hmm. And for those watching, I'm going to make a statement of a quote um, that I think is profound, but at the same time, truly provocative in a way. And you'll have to forgive me if I don't recall whether it was Plato or Socrates. Um, it may have been, um, it was one of, the, one of those two. And they said, the unexamined life is worth nothing. Oh, yeah. uh, I mean, it's, oh, a, yeah. that's yeah. Talking, you know, whatever it was, 400 BC, something like that. I and mean, then the deep philosophy, Western philosophy comes from the teachings of Socrates, Plato, Aristotle. And so that idea of examining our life and then wisdom being derived from that self-reflection and examination, it doesn't have to be in a, in a teaching institution. It doesn't have to be through a Lyceum, which is where you know, these great thinkers had their philosophical conversations and it doesn't have to be amongst the world's greatest minds to develop wisdom. It can be on our own, in our bedroom, under a blanket, reading a book at night sometimes to remind ourselves, okay, I can't turn the light on, but all right, today I will focus and commit to remaining open, which are two important components of the journey towards enlightenment. You, you hold that thought in mind. How do we examine our life so that we, you mentioned to have that meaning, how do we examine it in such a way as to bring meaning to our experiences, to our lives, so that there is greater fulfillment? That's a beautiful question. I think um, it doesn't come easily because we, our minds and our psyches have been bombarded with so much negativity and so many things to have to unpack and juggle and manage. And I think that we have to train our minds to focus more on the positive things in life and how to make positive out of negative, you know, uh, in reference to the wisdomism you just read, even um, they, it doesn't. It it takes years to, I'll use the word, become damaged, and it takes time to get out of that mindset. And so I, you know, my thought is practice. It takes practice, not only using this book, but doing other things. As I said, I wrote a gratitude journal for years. Um, I'll even, you know, it's, uh, something very personal. I was writing uh, my gratitude journal at a time when the, the most unimaginable thing happened to me. 
my son at 29 years old committed suicide and it it was the impact was incredibly horrifying difficult defeating crushing i, I can't use enough words to describe that but i never stopped writing in my gratitude journal i looked back not long ago, I think, you know, while I was going through the process of compiling this book in 2020, and I looked at my gratitude journals um, on the day of his death and the days subsequent to that, and I couldn't believe myself the things that I wrote that I was grateful for, but that is what the discipline and the training leads to you find good in everything you know after a time and i was able to find good i felt that my son was at peace you know he he did not have to suffer anymore and that was consoling to me you know i yes i was crushed that was my personal journey but his was over and I was grateful for that. So. Fred, like gratitude for sharing that vulnerability. What I would like to say in conclusion to this is one, you, you have our love and uh, given that you've just spoken of gratitude and finding gratitude in any moment, I think it's fitting that we, we express gratitude as we come to the end of this conversation. And firstly, I'm grateful for you, for your book, for the message that it brings grateful for the timely reminder that this becomes a training for our mind to create the experiences in life that we want so details are below where you can grab that book and use it as a training a daily reader to focus your mind and, and galvanize your spirit to move in the direction that you want and thirdly i always use three gratitudes thank you to to jack who is an incredible friend and human being for yes. both of us and yes um, this fortuitous meeting comes as a result of the interconnectedness of this world <laughs> For which we can also be grateful because it provides community even in times of isolation love and support across an entire expanse and this is just an incredible gift and your work Wendy, is beautiful your gift profound <laughs> well thank you so much dr chacos uh, this has been a wonderful experience for me as well and you know there are absolutely no accidents in life so <laughs> so this was meant to happen it's a pleasure talking to you and getting to know you today. <laughs>